PS2 talk for MBK Silent? I can fucking do that. I can fucking... I can do that. I like doing that. I can do that. I like doing that. Be honest, um, of all things Sony, I... Let's prop. Let's prop. I hope my audio is okay. Oh! Headphones. Sorry about that. Hope the audio is okay. We'll see. I hope I'm filming. Yeah, 40 seconds in. Um, be honest, of things that are Sony, there's probably a lot more PS1 and PS3 that I feel better about. You know, if I had 10 grand to spend in a week, and I had to focus on one generation of PlayStation to put my money into, selectively, of course, um, I think I'd be cherrying ah, PS3, you know, um, just because those prices are so low, and it's, I feel it's kind of not too difficult to predict what is going to be the more sought after stuff in the future, stuff that most likely won't be able to sustain with supply the future demand. And sometimes it's just not really that demand surges on any particular title, but slowly but surely supply kind of runs out as they settle into collections. Um, with that, anytime like pieces settle into collections, they always come flying back out of collections after their value quadruples and collectors start looking at it like, oh, I remember paying 15 for this, I can get 60 for it now, I'll sell it. The, it's interesting how as games ascend in value, they always they hit peaks and then they come crashing down because too many will come back into uh, circulation as people are tempted to sell it. I mean, it's how Kuan and Rule of Rose have been. The plateau for a while and all of a sudden people get comfortable. They get, uh, they feel safe about, you know, 300 bucks for Rule of Rose and it's been sustaining that. I'll buy it and Slowly they get dried up and then we'll see a new peak, a new bar set, record sales, and everyone chases after that and you know how it goes. So. Um, but PS2, a little bit trickier for me because uh, um, I don't know, man. It's like I don't see any monstrous upside on too many titles. And to be honest, like probably the most sure bet stuff is going to be stuff that's already really realized it's like not blowing anybody's mind to throw like i don't know some of the shadow hearts games out there or alter code f and wild arms alter code f wild arms 5 if you got the slip the the cover over it nice cib wild arms 5 just primo like everybody wants it kind of pieces no surprise if those end up doubling over time you know, become like $120, $150 RPGs just because, again, they get locked into collections and like they got to get really valuable before people are tempted to move them if they're really good and really hard to find. So, um, and I don't like really talking about what's already been realized. Um, I like talking about stuff that's like, man, not enough people are recommending this game. So, without further ado, PS2. A um, couple of DS notes too, because this is an NBK silent video. Um, get right into it. I kind of I picked these titles out hours ago, and then I proceeded to work on the warehouse, prepare for tomorrow's event, and that was for the best. Because as I'm picking titles out, I'm kind of like running through my mind, my talking points. But if I jump right into a video, I don't know. I feel like I'm rehashing what I've already told myself to say. And, that's not fun, so I like just kind of improvising to keep the best out of me that way. So, um, let's just jump right into PS2. Some of these are already kind of pricey and hard to get, um, but I just feel like they're really not on too many people's radar, so um, you might be able to catch one slipping. Uh, 
they're great games regardless of you know whether you get a great deal on it or pay quote unquote retail. I think you're definitely you're certainly gonna be safe with all the titles I'm about to show. Um, paying a let's just let's just go with price charting for complete. If you score a real nice copy at a price charted value on any of these games, if they appeal to you, I think I think you'll be good. So this is a Metal Gear Solid clone called Spy Fiction. What's cool about it is a couple of things. I like Sammy Publishing, um, very obscure publisher, very high quality. Um, Sammy is like a subsidiary of Sega. They got bought in um, like 2003 or something like that by Sega. And I don't think they've used that publisher tag in many years. Um, yeah, Sega even on the back of it. Um, before that, I think they worked closely with Neo Geo. It's a cool publisher. Access Games, developer that is headed by, at the time, uh, this dude named Swery65. He's kind of like a Kojima, uh, Suda51, just like a true artist of video games. He, uh, he wouldn't put out a game unless he was fully satisfied with it. It's great, complete product, so. Um, and he's known for putting his own unique, weird, Japanese-y, I mean, of course it's Japanese, but just just puts a weird, almost like an anime-like spin on something that some other artists already created, like another artist's vision, and he just twists it all up. So um, an example of that is Deadly Premonition. He was the director of that, and it's like a spin on the TV show Twin Peaks in the early 90s, and great game. This is like Metal Gear Solid with a twist. That's his, this will be the deepest one I go into, I'm gonna just kind of move faster on this stuff, that's it. Made Man, really scarce as far as distribution, and probably like print run, but they certainly didn't get out there. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if more than half of all that were ever made are currently in possession of Deal Tavern on eBay slash Amazon. Huge warehouse that, like, if that warehouse burnt down, there'd be so many games that would just be, holy shit, hard to get. Um, you'll notice that if you start looking out for more obscure publishers, especially Aspire. Um, they get their hands on a lot of Jalico stuff, but a lot of Majesco stuff. And they can be great quality games with just small print runs and even smaller distribution. So you look on eBay and it's like, whoa, nobody's got it. And everybody kind of prices off of Deal Tavern's new price. And they just kind of price off of like an algorithm, you know, based on selling metrics. So they can really fuck over like the market on certain rare titles. A good example is Samurai Jack on GameCube. Like Teal Tavern is like the only place to get that game. Um, that game didn't really circulate much, but they probably have a lot of copies of it. So just an interesting concept there to be aware of deal tapping new old stock. Um, all right. I won't go into too much detail on the rest of my comments, but, uh, aspires one of those publishers too. That's you can just rest assured pretty low print run. Um, especially in the early days, probably one of their first games. I think they're still around on like Xbox one and stuff. And they put out some really rare DS games as well. One that comes to mind. I believe they did Fighting Fantasy, not Final Fantasy, but Fighting Fantasy on DS. That's an interesting first-person uh, RPG. Check that out if that sounds, well, MVK, you're into Etrian Odyssey. Maybe check out Fighting Fantasy. Be one to kind of just feel good if you could find it, kind of the game, I would say. Don't go chasing it on eBay. It's kind of pricey, but somebody would slip on that game. just doesn't look like it's money. Fighting Fantasy. But... Great game, great uh, great storyline, kind of like a Grand Theft Auto. Not really, it's more like linear. So you really play it for the storyline. The environments are amazing. I was really stunned by the production quality of this game. Wouldn't be surprised if it's a PC game that had some decent effort put into it and they just slopped a PS2 version together and did a low print. So Made Man, I recommend checking that one out for the price. <clears throat> All right, I mostly had, I had one title to really recommend, and then I had a bunch of like similar genres to just kind of show up. But um, that's your hack and slash uh, 
platformer type games. These are already, you know, everybody knows about these. Um, Nightshade's been cranking up in value lately. Um, I've been moving my copies. I had several tucked aside because I didn't pay much. But this genre, I feel like, is pretty golden on PS2. You know, they it kind of started to evolve and and fade away in the 360 PS3 era, PS4, Xbox One. It's it's just different now. So much like I have a kind of a thing for the 32-bit racing genre. You know, like realism isn't good in that era, but they have this arcadey fun feel to them. So 32-bit racers, kind of a, uh, they have some kind of um, endearing qualities about them. And same with like those act, those hack and slash action platformers, 3D on PS2. Um, really heavy one comes to mind, of course, is Blood Will Tell by Sega. That's one I really like as far as like, it's already really pricey, but pay up for it, man. That's a prize piece, super rare. Um, I've been obsessed with video game hunting since the year 2000. So I can tell you like that one was on my radar when it first came out and you just didn't see it very often. Never saw it in stores. Um, Blood will tell, good one. Um, but of that genre, I just want to show a few others. Very cheap right now, Nano Breaker by Konami. Um, Devil Kings and Chaos Legion, Capcom. Kind of Devil May Cry by Engine. Slopped more action, hack and slash action platformers together. The one I really wanted to recommend though, there we go. So if you're familiar with Super Nintendo, um, elite Grayley kind of game, Hagane. Hagane was developed by, was published by Hudson, developed by a company called Red Entertainment. And Red's done a lot of stuff that a lot of people know about, but you know, it's for years, it's publisher gets more recognition than the developer. So for example, like Bonk on Turbo Graphics, Air Zonk, that was Red Entertainment. I believe they did the first bonk. Um, and they did? Yeah. Yep, yep. My homie Chris is in the background. Um, Red Entertainment did uh, Spike McFang on Super Nintendo, fantastic Zelda clone. Um, and Hagane. Um, I'm trying to think of some of their later stuff. They kind of, I so with all that said, it was like they were a talented dev team for two-dimensional pixel art. You look at all those games, it's like, yeah, they, they had some good artists there and good programmers that just put together excellent 8 and 16-bit games. And I don't think they it worked as well for them. I don't think they evolved as great as as we went polygons, but they stuck around, probably uh, brought in new talent. I could do 3D games and Red Entertainment did some PS2 games. They did the two Gungrave games. Um, first one published by Sega. I feel it's a little bit harder to find, especially nice, complete, um, than Gungrave Overdose, published by Mastiff. They have a similar print run. Definitely gonna feel a little bit more demand for this one, and that may be indicative of it being a better game. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. I haven't played them, but watched the gameplay, and decent. Um, I just like their style, man. I think they just, rad collectible games and like i said decent decent gameplay music everything just uh i don't know i don't know what makes a game collectible like this where it's like it's, it's certainly not like oh my god i gotta play this I, I need to experience that that's more like your rpgs and just super fantastic platformers and stuff but i don't know they're cool hard to find anime really neat is Bujin Guy, uh, Taito published, Red Entertainment, probably the same engine as the Gungrave games, and it features this uh, as a protagonist is some like J-pop star from the early 2000s. Um, they did character models of them, and, and that's the dude. 
I just remember that because my sister was big in anime and she had a, a friend that was obsessed with this dude in real life. And um, yeah, so I always remember this title. Really cool foil um, title. I don't know, check game, but I know it's, it's so corny of me to like recommend games. It's like, I don't, I don't play this stuff, but um, definitely hard to find. Look at that sexy ass manual, too. Look at that. Hard to find game. Taito, red. Like me. I can see that one jumping. So to be able to get that one for 20 bucks or less, uh, probably a good financial decision. I gotta be quicker, man. There's one I like, bang for your buck right now. Um, pick it up for 20 bucks, 25. Might not be easy to do, but um, you won't lose money on that. Koei games, I just wanted to say that, like, man, Koei, low print, high quality for what they are, for the genres that they are, great experiences that you're not gonna find from other companies. Koei really has a niche that they satisfy, but that niche is just not enough to ever create demand that strongly outweighs supply. So Koei stuff, as hard as it can be to find, and I've met people that have requested, like, man, I'm looking for a Warship Gunner 2. Please track it down. I gotta play, I gotta smoke packs of cigarettes, play Warship Gunner 2. Can't find it. And it's like, track it down, they don't wanna pay more than 20 bucks for it, you know? Um, that's just the Koei way. I always thought like Koei was great production quality, always just nice manuals. Ever since the NES days, you know, they've they put effort into their publishing, but it's just the genres themselves um, aren't conducive to high demand. So, and like I was saying with the cigarette smoking, man, uh, over the years I've just seen a very high correlation with uh, Koei games and stinks like cigarettes. Makes sense, you know? 17 years old playing Romance of the Three Kingdoms, smoking cigarettes, strategizing. Makes sense. I see a lot of Final Fantasy tactics on PS1 too. Just stinking like smoke. I like it. I like little correlations like that. That's called conditional rarity, by the way. In some games, great, the most common thing is like when a game is a rental exclusive. It's just inherently hard to find in nice shape. You know? Already been realized, but I can just see this one being slipped on. If you're ever out out and about, you see it at a game store, it shot up pretty quickly to where, you know, somebody might have an old price on it, $25 or something, and it goes for more around like 40 now. Um, good uh, 3D Contra kind of game. Dimensional... Run and gun, I guess you'd say two players. Not bad. Very late release. Remember this game was like in development hell for a long time and it was most likely not gonna come out and then suddenly it just had a small print run. Tension Fatal Shadows, another one that like Deal Tavern is one of the few places to get it. Not many copies surface on eBay, so it could be cheap, and just hard to find in quality. So. Haven't played this one, but it looks great. Um, I've, I I want to say this is Evil Twin on the Sega Dreamcast in PAL format in, J in Japan, and it got ported to PS2, and they changed the name. Not 100% on that, but I remember looking at this years ago, thinking like, oh yeah, that's what they must have done. It looked identical. I'm not sure, but maybe we just want to check out. Um, a lot of YouTubers are kind of passively suggesting this one, so I wouldn't be surprised if it starts... Starts heating up, getting harder and harder to get. So for the price, might want to take a look at Okage. Eh, it's all right. It's unique. Not great. It's no God Hand from Capcom. But I wanted to grab this one just to make me think of a different game that I don't have on hand to show. But kind of a sleeper is Final Fight Streetwise. Nice, complete copies of Streetwise, just hard to get. Don't know why. You'd think that they would have done a moderate to high print run of them, but maybe a lot of them went to rental stores or something. But Final Fight Streetwise is one I can see getting hot. So not so much beat down, but Final Fight Streetwise. For how cheap 
the Katamari games are. Just grab them. Get get yourself your Katamaris. Dirt cheap. They what happened was they underprinted them when they first came out, but then there was a reprint where they just did too many of them. So I feel like the value under tanked, and it's never really um, come back to life. So these are like these are like sports titles, cheap almost, and they're so good. And even like it's one of those games where you can get them on more modern systems, but they're really not any better. And in a lot of ways, the originals have more charm. So, hope this video doesn't go too long. Um, Under the Skin was a sleeper for a long time with its Resident Evil cameo. Um, oddball game just feels like a like a Sega Dreamcast game, kind of um, cell shaded. I I tried playing it, didn't have a ton of fun with it, but um, quirky, very scarce. Um, and Deal Tavern used to be the only place to get it, and they ran out. So now it's now it's kind of I feel like it's kind of tied to Resident Evil. Anytime Resident Evil is getting really hot, you know their fan base is gonna every now and then mention mention this. And for how damn rare this game is, um, that could be enough of a little sprinkled extra demand to make you know the supply run out. And this one could. Who knows? I don't. I don't know. I can see like seventy, sixty, seventy dollars. That's nuts, so as that might sound. Um, for your flying games, of course, your your jet combat games. Everybody knows Ace Combat is kind of the the golden standard. Falcon War being the greatest um, fan favorite there, and it's the scarcest, so that's why it's it trumps these like fivefold in value these are cheap as shit and this one's decent but really interesting other ones that fall right into that genre that are really fucking rare is aero elite by sega and you know this isn't a genre i enjoy at all so i can't give my recommendation for gameplay but just you know take this for as a collector tips like these can be cheap and super scarce on ebay Maybe Radical Reggie will jerk off to it one day, and that's all it would take, man. Um, that's a concept there too. Like um, when a when a YouTuber with a big enough fan base picks his or her absolute favorite games, it's one thing to do an occasional video where they cover ten hidden gems and they all have a brief moment of of high demand. Or maybe values kind of spike for a second. eBay gets cleared out, and then come back down to earth. But like Radical Reggie just loves on Steambot Chronicles PS2, and he just keeps loving on it. He brings it up all the time, live chats, live streams. Like brings it up. It's his favorite game. Mentions it, mentions it all the time. That game will never come down as long as Reggie has an audience, and he keeps pimping um, Steambot Chronicles. Eric Landon RPG. That guy's a creep. He sucks. He's disgusting. He really is. Um, Eric Landon. I'm, I'm going to throw him in my title. I'm going to call this one Eric Landon RPG is a creep. This video is for MPK, so I don't know. Um, Eric Landon is a disgusting, filthy creep, but he absolutely has a boner for Sakura Wars on the Nintendo Wii and, and PS2. And look at fucking price charting on that game. He just keeps jerking off to it with his audience. And, you know, he talks about RPGs all the time. And, like, RPGs just do what they do. They're always in demand. But, you know, there's never, like, insatiable demand. But he's got his audience convinced that they need to go out and get Sakura Wars. So, think, shut up, man. That little dude had the power to crank up a video game. What am I saying? Flying games. Okay, uh, rare. Lethal Skies, another Sammy, like I was saying earlier. And then there's Lethal Skies 2, even harder to find than this one. And I just enjoy looking out for these in the wild. Like, I'm not really going to go gunning them down on eBay. Um, and I, I don't think they have potential to have massive demand, but for how rare they are, they're just fun to come across and grab. It's a genre that I think ages decently, too. Um, they were going for realism at the time, but I don't know. Check them out if you're, if you're into it. Beyond Good and Evil, I like just because they if they ever do a sequel to this, 
game over, man. Uh, it'll be very pricey. Of course, GameCube version, it's multi-platform, but um, kind of hard to find on, on all platforms. Quality game, uh, criminally underrated was what everybody said about it years ago. So for years, it's been one of the most, you know, so in a way, it's like, this one isn't underrated. Everybody says it's the greatest underrated game of all time. So what does, it, what does that make it? It makes it kind of a well-known good game. So, Beyond good and evil. This is the hardest find Ape Escape game on PS2, and it looks like the coolest. I love the cel shaded graphics. I've never played it because I don't really play video games that much. But uh, I don't know. Check that out. It looks like you can equip different shit. It looks cel shaded. It looks charming. Hard to find. Not very expensive. It's late, by the way. My energy's kind of drinking too. Um, Clock Tower Three, man. The homie Chris called this shot in some of our older videos. Um, I would always joke like, "When's when's it gonna be Clock Tower Three's turn?" You know, you got the you got the scary rule of rose. You got haunting grounds, scared chick. How about this scared chick? Capcom scared chick, survival horror. And sure enough, right now it's roaring on eBay relative to where it was at just a couple months ago. And I can just feel it's dealer manipulation. You know, they're trying to um, associate it with, man, 26 minutes in, fuck. Um, associate it with other survival horrors that that are sustaining such a huge value that they were looking at like, well, 30, 25, $30, like can't go wrong. And they're right, but it's, it's much more common than Haunting Ground and Rule of Rose. So it's plateaued hard at 60 and I can just kind of feel like people kind of doing what I did when I was getting them for like cheap. Um, Chris, what was your average 25 into each one? Yeah. And, um, and so now like just because just a short while ago you were able to grab these for 25, it's like all these resellers are cranking it up to 60. It's plateauing hard at 60. Like there's like five per day that get listed and they sell too. So I just feel like the dealers, just continuing to throw money at it, trying to like keep it, keep it scarce. And I'm going to get the, I'm going to just dump these on eBay and make it, uh, make it hard for them to crank that one up. The only thing I noticed when I was looking at it was there was a surprising amount that were missing manual in the whole ecosystem of listings, you know, but I, it's still too common. It was like, there, it was one that I would always see like pre-owned at Blockbusters a lot. They rented it out a lot. It had a pretty big print run, to be honest, but I could see where like a lot of manuals were lost to rentals. And then also, I believe it went sub $10 at GameStop, $9.99, which was this threshold that for a period of time, like GameStops were given on their own discretion, like you can throw away cases of manuals for those uh, $9.99 or less just to save space in the store. So um, a, a com another Capcom game that's known for having a lot of its cases of manuals thrown away is Mega Man X7. That game got cheap and a lot of, a lot of game stops chucked them. So, all right, I'll try to speed it up. Fuck, man. I'm just lying. I, I, can't, I can't move fast. Um, just hope my phone doesn't run out of shit. Um, Ring Red. This is a good one as far as fantastic thing for your buck for how scarce it is, how unique it is, high quality. Um, it's a full package. It's a good, you know, they got the storyline elements going on. Great, great gameplay, tactical. Um, I guess Valkyria Chronicles would be your, your parallel there. It's like an early Valkyria Chronicles. Um, Canadian Gamer put this one on my radar, but I'd already heard, I think from like Radical Reggie or Metal Jesus that it's, it's just cool how they, they remade all these fantastic arcade and like Sega Master System era classic Sega titles with um, totally from the ground up. Made them all like budget titles. Like you'd imagine these would just be like $10 PS1 games in Japan budget, but all in one compilation and pretty neat for what it is. Only on PS2, which I like a lot. So um, for how cheap it is, man, that's, that's one to just knock out. Just want to mention raw danger and disaster report are up right now because of a lot of hype behind disaster report 4 on ps4 so 
interesting games made by Irem and um, really nothing else out there like them. So 3D open world uh, experience of catastrophe, the end of the world type scenario. Just how fucking weird is that? You know, Japanesey, super low print. I won't say super low print, but you don't see that one too often. Disaster report, I would say, is rarer. I don't have a copy right now, which sucks. I'm going to get them listed as a lot. One, two combo. Um, with the wrestling fan base, I feel like this one goes overlooked and just quirky and fun. Um, that's me judging uh, YouTube content. I'll be honest, like a lot of times when I say a game looks like a lot of fun, it's because I'm judging the YouTube content, the comments, the reviews and stuff, so I'm just like a amalgamation of other people's opinions and shit, so but again, speculation, take it with a grain of salt, but I see, I wouldn't be surprised if this one's already up, last I checked it was like a 10, 15 or so, somebody was like, Dave, it's going for like 40 now, are you surprised? I'm not surprised, I'm not surprised at all, um, this is where the beat 'em up genre was really at its peak in the 16-bit era and arcades with great two-dimensional sprites. That's like what the beat 'em up genre was meant to be, was two-dimensional. And then when it went 3D, it was just hard for companies to get it right. Even like games like Die Hard Arcade are kind of cheesy and not mechanically sound, but I'd say Urban Rain is the best I've ever seen. So and I played it, I've actually had my hands on this one and it was good. So I highly recommend Urban Rain. Checking that one out if you like beat em ups. Falling Stars. There you go. Cheap. Neat. Sorcerer's Stone. Sleeper. Pricey. In demand, of course. People like the Harry Potter. I heard there's some controversy about J.K. Rowling and not liking trannies or something like that, and people burning Harry Potter books. I don't know how that's going to affect, but, you know, that kind of shit matters when it comes to, you know, what are people dumping these on eBay out of, um, out of their, uh, protests of JK Rowling. I don't know, but that's just one I wanted you to be aware of. Also on the GameCube and Xbox, you ever see Sorcerer's Stone, not PS1 though. You see PS1, throw that thing in the trash. Um, this is money though. Money, cube is money, but it's totally a sleeper. You know, I can see somebody pricing that like it's any other Harry Potter game not not good and i can see somebody matching that like five bucks on this buy that sell it trade it capcom decent decent looking game looks, looks all right and huge fan base you know how many people have you seen with a tattoo of that dude jack skellington you know people this cult classic people love it so pretty moderate low print run kind of thing so see just continuing to rise and rise so just catch it on the cheap snag it it'll go up um, content value here is phenomenal